for those of you that are not aware, um, Cyberpunk 2077, they, the, the, the co-founder came out with this apology, right? He said, I'm sorry for the game in the state. Blah, 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 blah. Oh, and by the way, those next gen uh, <laughs> uh, upgrades for the console, nah, I don't expect it anytime soon. Hold on one second. He said, don't expect it anytime soon, right? <laughs> so, that even further, in my mind, puts Stadia in a situation where as this game improves, which it surely will, I think it'll, it'll improve. As this game improves and those improvements get reported and the community uh the game community starts to soften their heart for cyberpunk 2077 you're still going to have a situation where to best indulge in that because these the, 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 look the new consoles are still gonna, still going to be hard to get a hold of the first half of 2021 because of covid because of supply that ultimately your best place to play this is still going to be stadium and here's the kicker a lot of people we did this we did a study on broadbandbullies.com a while ago i think it was in july of 2020 we did it based upon this article or a series of articles that was proclaiming and it was one from our good friend paul tassie proclaiming that X Cloud was, you know, you started to hear the, the the song on the Titanic to sink the ship of Stadia. I should mess with Paul Tassi and retweet that and say, aged with hashtag aged well, <laughs> just to see what he does and see if he blocks me. <laughs> you know what? I might do that. I'm gonna look for that tweet because Paul. You know what? As much as I get on Paul Tassi's case about what he had to say about Stadia. Uh, because it not because of his opinion, but because again it wasn't wasn't rooted in fact, and he was misinforming using he was using the powerhouse of the Forbes um, machine to misinform gamers. That's a big no no as far as we're concerned. Um, because of that, you know, we would you know go back and forth with him, but I got to give him credit. Paul Tassie is not one of those people that cowers quickly and blocks you like a Tom Warren. Tom likes to give his misinformation and not be challenged about it and disappear. And Paul Tassie's not, he, he's not made of that ilk. Paul Tassie will at least stand and, and, and uh, defend what he did, right or wrong. So I got a lot of respect for Paul. But um, he's wrong. <laughs> he's often wrong. Um, shout out to Brian. He says, what's good, MM Cap in the house? Good to see you, Cap. as always but I mean I think in the long run this is going to make uh, this is going to make um, Cyberpunk 2077 on Stadia a lot more viable because right now it's so controversial but it's still popular so imagine when it gets better imagine when the game gets better and on top of that the next gen upgrades are not coming until 2021 the second half of 2021 right for the consoles let alone next gen upgrades for stadia or whatever upgrades are coming to stadia we keep forgetting what a lot of people are misinformed on is they think that this is the apex of stadia the stadia is just a platform where the server blades are going to be 10.7 teraflops this is it it has the GCN architecture, and that's it. That's it. It's over. It's done. No more. No more new iterations of Stadia coming anytime soon, right? And that's wrong. We already got Chronos Group that have made active their their software-based ray tracing, right? 
That's already been implemented and stuff. It's coming to Hitman. That's already been announced. It's coming to Kronos. That's already been announced. Um, so you got you, you got a lot of stuff coming now. Stadia already already implement um, already spoke of there be being 8K 120 frames per second implementation coming to Stadia. The question is just when. When are we going to start seeing those games doing that? So we don't know what type of upgrades are coming to the Stadia version of this game. But even before those next gen upgrades come out, I think the biggest point, the biggest thing that Stadia could do to help continue to juice this Cyberpunk 2077 tree as much as they can is help juice that and take the, take the fruits of that tree and use it as much as possible is the simple fact that the Stadia app might be coming natively to Android TV slash Google TV before those next gen enhancements come out. And if that is the case, my God, my God, my God. Why do I say that? Because if those next gen enhancements come out, After, well after the fact like if they don't come to like what what October November but yet Stadia is already running natively on Google TV Android TV we already know they're coming to LG TVs and, and possibly Sony TVs you got it and and the though the Google TV architecture supports Bluetooth Meaning, because I'm already doing it. Meaning that those games are going to be playable via Google TV in all likelihood, across the board in all likelihood, with your PlayStation 4, your Xbox controller, whatever controller Google supports. I'm already using it right now by sideloading it because Google TV supports Bluetooth. And I have the newest Google TV Chromecast. So when I'm down in the living room and I'm playing games, when I'm playing Immortals Phoenix Rising on my Chromecast, my Google TV Chromecast, I'm using my Xbox controller. Can you imagine the power of that? So all you got to do is go out at worst, if it's not already ingrained into your TV, at worst, all you got to do is go out and buy this $50 dongle. And you can start playing Cyberpunk 2077 with all its enhancements, you know, with all of the new DLC and stuff like that on a $50 dongle. And it's still going to be pretty much the second best way to play it until those next gen enhancements come. And when those next gen enhancements come, we don't know what's gonna happen with the stadium version. Stadium version could be getting enhanced too. So, there you have it. That's why that whole situation could mean so much for Stadia if they play their cards right. 